The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. And the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, they breathed, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples took him. We have seen the Lord, but he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. <coughs> now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. It is not just encapsulated in that one day. It's like kickoff Sunday. And we have 50 days to really embrace and live into the light and love of God. Which, of course, would be nice to think that we get to do that all the time. That's the point. Um, but certainly in terms of what we really get to participate in and be present to, that's who we are today. And this, in many traditions, you'll hear people even out in the secular world talk about Doubting Thomas. Is there a special saint day for Doubting Thomas Sunday? No. And sometimes it's like, is he really Doubting Thomas? But we have, he, we sit here at, in St. Thomas Episcopal Church. 
and wonder who is it that Thomas was and how does he inform who we are and our faith today? One of the things that jumped out to me in the gospel this week that I don't think has in the past is it says, a week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. So we now, by the end of this gospel, have three resurrection stories. We have the one where Mary went, and we talked about last week, where she went and, and saw that Jesus wasn't there. And then at the beginning of this gospel, the disciples were gathered together in, the, in a room, but the door was locked and they were terrified. Why were they afraid? They were afraid of the powers that be. They were afraid of this story that they'd heard was going to happen. But it's one thing. Have you ever known that something was going to happen? And then when it happens, it's like, now what do I do? Now what do I do? And so they are here, but they are terrified of what could happen. They saw what the powers that be did to Jesus. What are they going to do to them? So it's at that point that I think in my imagination, I always saw the Doubting Thomas story or the story of Thomas asking his question and wanting proof. I think I always kind of bunched them all together in the same evening. But it's not in the same evening. Because we all want to know God. We all want to have those questions. We all want to imagine how is it that we can see God's grace in the world no matter who we are, no matter how long time has passed. And so one of the things that's interesting is even though the disciples were terrified, even though they remember they were also Jesus' closest friends and they were the ones that had denied him and betrayed him. They didn't actually have his back very much there towards the end. Have you ever had that feeling, maybe I'm the only one, um, that like you're walking along and you know early, you, maybe there's just something either you did in your life or some person you knew you were supposed to call 10 years ago and you're walking down the aisle at Walmart, and there they are. And what do you want to do? Come on, ha! I am not the only one that wants to duck into the next aisle. These guys aren't in a huge hurry to see Jesus. I mean, on the one hand, they want to see Jesus because that's the good news. On the other hand, they didn't actually have his back very much, and what's he going to do? What's this reaction going to be like? Thanks, guys. Big help. But even in this story, God has our humanity. God has us at those times in our life when we maybe weren't our best selves. God, even at that time in the story, has us as Jesus coming through the door because he needed to show them that he was still Jesus, but he was also different. So he came through the door. And what does he say like, so guys, how'd that work for you? What does he say, thanks, um, that was harder than it needed to be? No. He looks at them and says, peace be with you. In what feels like a very peaceful, open-hearted way. Because for Jesus, the worst is over and the light is coming. For Jesus, he's no longer sitting in the garden. Please, you know, if this cup could pass, that would be really great. But at this point in the story, Jesus gets to be the person that tells us about God's abundant grace. So in he comes. And I can imagine they are tremendously relieved. Relieved because that relationship is still going to be okay. Relieved because that's all intact. Relieved that it's going to be okay. So I always imagine that it's at that point that Thomas wants to talk to Jesus, but it makes much more sense. 
that they experience that and then Jesus leaves and they go about their week because I can't imagine they stayed holed up in the room for a week, although maybe they did, they were very afraid. And then a week later, Thomas, they're still gathering. They're still gathering. And a week later, Thomas is like, but I want to see Jesus. I want to know God. I want what you guys got. That's not, a, it's kind of a different way to ask the question. And so we imagine Jesus coming back through those doors. And again, he doesn't unlock the door. He goes through because our fear and our doubt and our anger and our rage doesn't get in Jesus' way. All of those parts of us that are so normal and human and part of who we are on the planet, God already knows. So Jesus comes through the door. He doesn't let any of our stuff get in the way. He comes through the door and he's like, so hi, Thomas. And Thomas just peacefully says, I just, I want to know you too. I want to touch you too. Isn't that what gets us out of bed on a Sunday morning to come here sometimes? Isn't that what calls us to not go to Tucker's and get in line for breakfast early? Isn't that what calls us to fill in the blank about what we could be doing on a Sunday morning? Because, especially in this day and age, you have millions of choices. But we, too, want to know God. We, too, want to not just believe, because you must believe if you wandered in here this morning. But we also want to know who God is and how God is being made manifest in the world. And we know that not only by reading and praying and all that stuff that we know about religion, but we also mostly know it by knowing other people that have known God, by hearing someone else say, I really had this experience when I was going through that divorce when I really felt like there was no way out it was God that helped me see my way through it was other people that had been through it before that said it's okay you, you hang out with me until you can stand on your own it is through other people there's a quote by Henry Nowens. I was reminded of an old book of his recently, The Wounded Healer. And thinking about how is it that we are able to connect with each other. And he says, the great illusion of any leadership is to think that man can be led out of the desert by someone who has never been there. is the illusion that man can be led out of the desert by someone who has never been there. We hear in the gospel message this morning that Jesus leaves to make room for us, each of us, and that we hear later in scripture that we are to do greater things than he. And that is by telling our story. That is by showing up over and over again and finding ways when we don't know where God is, we get to even say, you know what, I'm not sure I know where God is today, but maybe together we can imagine that God is with us because we heard somewhere in that book that when two more gathered together, God is in our midst. Because even when we're not sure, God is with us. I'm not sure that it is so much about Thomas being doubting it is, as it is about Thomas seeking connection. 
as it is about Thomas wanting to connect with God and with others. And is there a better way to describe this church? I don't think so. I know I'm a little biased at this point. I've now been here long enough, so I'm pretty invested. I grant you that. But what do we care about here? We care about each other. Hopefully we care about God first, because, you know, that's important. But how does that make manifest? It makes manifest by being in touch with each other. It makes manifest by praying together. It makes manifest by Dover Friendly Kitchen and on and on and on. We care about each other. That is what Thomas wanted. <coughs> and Jesus says, peace be with you. But there will be the rest of you, us, that will need to have faith and believe without necessarily being able to touch my hand. The rest of you, us, will have to believe because of the story because of each other, because of the scripture, because of prayer, because, fill in the blank, because God's infinite grace, God's infinite abundance can come to find you in so many different ways that God doesn't have to limit God's self. But it is because we have walked through the desert it is because we have found our way to find God and that we desperately want others to feel that. Sometimes it's like, so, you know, I think for me, one of the things that is central, people will say stuff to me about being a priest or whatever, and it's like, I know that God saved my life. I could bore you with the details, but at the end of the day, it is my faith and my relationship to God that has continued to change the way, as we hear in our prayer book, we live and move and have our being. So I know how to do the prayer book. I know how to do the rubrics. I'm learning a lot about scripture. But what I know is that no matter where you are in your life, no matter what it is that you're going through, gone through, been through, somebody else has already been there. And that what I know, and that we know together and we know with each other, is that you are not alone. That the resurrection happens when we meet each other on the way. And there are times when we won't recognize Jesus. But if we keep walking, if we keep talking, if we keep connecting, this is a prayer uh, written this week by the Bishop of Texas. He is uh, Andrew Doyle. He is a character and a half, um, and he has written a couple of books. But he offers up this, this prayer this week, and I finish with this. I am the non-believer, the skeptic, even a deceiver. I'm the two-faced Christian, the Sunday morning faithful, <clears throat> and the weekday scornful. No, Jesus, you touch my wounds, seen and unseen. Feel the broken skin of my hands work to the bones, see my broken legs, Tired of the weight of the world, my pierced side from the back staggers not. I am the man, the woman, the child who calls in the night, silently cries out and weeps for loss. Give me faith because I cannot touch. Give me faith because I cannot feel. Give me faith, because I cannot see. Give me faith. I'm not the blessed, but the damned, the lost, and the weak. You are the one I see, hear me, 
Help me hear your words, your invitation, your grace. Help me, Lord Jesus, to see my reflection in your wounds, <clears throat> my hope in your death, and my life in your resurrection. Give me faith because I cannot touch. Give me faith because I cannot feel. Give me faith because I cannot see. Give me faith.